I want you to react to this. So, chat, check this out. Um, obviously, you know, just more sources. And I don't know if people feel a little bit more brave because he's incarcerated. But New York Post, and, you know, usually they're, uh, I won't say all the way right or always right, but they do have a good um, high accuracy rate with them using sources, right? Yeah. They know they know people who are former law enforcement or sometimes they know people, you know, will just come forward to them rather than other outlets. They ran a story to say inside Sean Diddy Combs Hampton sex parties featuring gay rappers who was high on ketamine. And um, it says jailed hip hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs alleged freak off party stunned one drug dealer after he saw household celebrities having sex with each other. The dealer said Diddy opened the door to his former Hamptons mansion. By the way, chat, we have to think about the Hamptons. The Hamptons are the place of usually the rich and famous. When you think about the now white parties with uh, Michael Rubin, Hamptons, for whatever reasons, the Hamptons is like the place where rich, famous celebrities go to unwind, right? And it doesn't mean always sexually, but Jay Z is out there. You'll see Jack Dorsey. You'll see them just walking down the street. You'll see, you know, um, Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio. I don't don't know why, but that's the place. Anyway, uh, Diddy used to throw white parties. I don't know if you guys know. Like Diddy is the original provocateur of the the um, white parties that now seemingly is taken over by Michael Rubin. This is why I call him the White Diddy. Now, this is supposedly a drug dealer who popped in. They said this guy. Went to the former Hamptons mansion. Did he open a door? He was wearing nothing but a robe. And he brought him to a back bedroom to do a cocaine deal. It, it, this is what the guy is saying. He says, weird shit was starting to happen. Celebrity guys. Fuck it. There were back bedrooms. And it was like an inner sanctum. Wow. Um, by the way, you know, I do want to pause and ask Myron a question. Because I've seen Wack made this point And I've seen um, Umar made this point. What's the difference between... Because some people are saying, yo, he's being charged for being a freak. What's the difference between freaky and sex trafficking? Because also, here's the thing, too. Yeah. The thousand bottles of baby oil, people are torn on it. It makes for great headlines. But people are saying, wait, owning baby oil? It like, why are you acting like this is a thousand kilos of Coke? Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things why they're going after Diddy here. Um, the main thing is... And what this is what the government's going to argue that the sex wasn't consensual because of the witnesses or the witnesses fear that they would deal with severe consequences had they not participated, which obviously I predict Diddy's team is going to fight and say this was all consensual. They traveled across country to see this man. He will fly them in. They didn't have to come. They didn't have to do these sexual acts. They don't have to participate. They didn't have to keep traveling with him for days or weeks on end. That's more than likely what his defense is going to do. They're going to argue that all of this was consensual and the beatings and the fear and all this other shit are bullshit, right? That's what they're going to say. But where the government is going to get him is that some of these girls, girl or girls, I don't know how many victims they have here, were underage, which in that case is game over. It doesn't matter if it was consensual. Okay, so, so, you know, that's what people also pointed out. And by the way, his lawyer's been using that. His lawyer says there isn't any, you know, at least, I guess he hasn't gotten discovery yet, but he says at least in the initial indictment, there isn't any indication that there's underage women. And he actually took offense to Diddy's case being related to R. Kelly's case and, of course, Jeffrey Epstein's case, both in which there were underage victims who are unable to give consent so automatically any sexual activity um, and transporting them from state to state just initially falls into sex trafficking. Um, if you're if you're an agent investigating this case and you're starting to see you're dealing with a celebrity. Right. So put your put, put your, um, you know, um, you agent know, hat your, on. Your, your agent hat sure. on again. Sure. What are you looking at to see if it fits under sex trafficking versus, hey, these were willing participants who are just freaky like Diddy? And like, that, what are the things you're looking at? This is a fucking great question, bro, because it's going to allow and me to. Also, kind of, you ahead, have to manage that there are civil suits. So people there's a financial incentive. Go ahead. OK, um, so. This is a fucking great ass question, bro. So here's the thing when it comes to human trafficking, and I and I really want to explain this to the audience. There's a difference between human trafficking and human smuggling. And the problem is that people constantly uh people constantly 
forget that they're two different crimes, right? So what ends up happening a lot of times is human trafficking gets conflated with human smuggling. Human smuggling is the illegal... Oh, yeah. What's oh, my bad. Oh, you good. Okay. No, no, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I'm playing a video in the background. I forgot no, you to good, you good, you good, you um, good. Human smuggling is the illegal migration of illegal aliens into the United States, right, that are immigrants or illegal aliens and whatever, right? That's human smuggling. They typically pay a fee and they come in. Human trafficking is the forced labor of an individual or moving them around for some type of benefit to the person where the other person doesn't get, right? There's different elements to the crime, right? Under duress, can't leave, et cetera, all this other stuff. That's the two main things. Now, what happens a lot of time is people think that prostitution rings are human trafficking rings. What the reality is, it's just prostitutes that work with a pimp. And they got mad at their pimp and said, I'm being human trafficked. Then when the you know, feds actually show up and ask questions. They're like, no, I was just mad at him. It wasn't really human trafficking. He didn't pay me and I was pissed off. It's not human trafficking, right? Because they were doing it electively. So I say all that to say that human trafficking isn't easy to prove. It's actually a pretty hard charge to prove because you need to prove that it was against their will. And I predict that his defense team is going to use the fact that it was consensual and they made overt attempts to engage in the set acts when they didn't have to. Now, where they're going to uh, where the feds are going to come in, and this is why feds typically take human trafficking cases in the first place, is when underage girls are involved because it makes it a lot easier for them to prove their case because even if the girl was uh, was consensual to it, it doesn't matter. The girl can't consent, so therefore it's human trafficking automatically. Mm. Okay. So, you know what? So, so, and... I know some people are like, Yo, thank God Act moved off of the, the Drake and Kendrick stuff. But a lot of times when people think about trafficking, we think about like containers. Like, yo, you're locked against you. I heard someone say, bro, y'all got to come with better, you know, like if you're saying trafficking or sex trafficking, y'all can't just say baby wall. Where's the handcuffs? Where are, the, where are these physical things that show that people could have not left, walked out the door? Hey, oh, y'all about to have a, uh, uh, five niggas and two girls all fucking goodbye. In your experience, is that just a fallacy that sex trafficking or human trafficking, well, well, let's say sex trafficking, is like people locked in vans and traveled across? Because I know Diddy's lawyers are going to make the point that, wait, how was Cassie tra trafficking? Number one, she was flying around in private jets. Yeah. What? Who, who gets trafficked getting on a private jet? Also... And, and and I feel like I keep giving you multi-part uh, questions for explain. No worries. But this is going to be another part of it. Allegedly, Diddy had Cassie book a lot of the escorts. So maybe her credit card. I don't know. If, I don't know if you pay for escorts or credit card. However, she was paying for them or soliciting those people. Emails, hitting up an agency, calling. She was doing it. Wasn't Diddy saying, "Hey, give me three niggas with long paws," even though. She said in her civil suit he would in, he would instruct her to what that's that seems like hearsay unless there's like written in, in a text or something and also uh, how do we know that she's not just throwing it on him is that a valid defense no uh, and, and you best believe that um, I guarantee Cassie is probably a witness in this investigation and, and real quick I just want to tell everybody that's watching me guys I'm going to get off Twitch I'm going to be on YouTube and Rumble so come on over to YouTube or Rumble, guys. I'm going to get off my uh, Twitch stream. Fresh is going to go stream with FaZe. So that's what's going to be going on, on on their Twitch channel. So I'm going to get off. Um, okay, sorry about that. Um, he's over at TwitchCon, bro. You should have went too. But uh, to answer your question uh, with Cassie, okay. So I'm pretty confident that she's probably a government witness at this point. However, I anticipate that one of Diddy's defenses, I'm glad that we're having this conversation, he's probably going to have receipts and proof that she aided him in facilitating these sex parties. They were together for so goddamn long, he probably has some dirt on her too to show that she was involved as well with helping him set the shit up. Because make no mistake about it, she was, you know, when he was sitting there watching her get plowed by other guys or whatever, it was consensual a lot of the times. Was it every single time? Maybe not. But there was a lot of consensual fuckery going on too. Okay, is it possible? And, and, and now, now we're into the woods. But, but, but again, I, I want you now as, you know, as an agent... Um, to, to to think about it like that. Well, if, if you're saying this is against her will, well, there were many other men that were either being paid or or involved. Diddy wasn't the only person having sex with her. Why aren't they charged? 
if everything is against this, because again, we keep seeing, at least right now for the indictment, we see this one victim, which is Cassie. If if you're saying all the sexual conduct was against her will, why aren't the prostitutes charged? Why aren't other people charged? Um, and just Diddy, unless unless you're saying Diddy had everybody doing it against everybody's will, and why aren't they listed as victims? Yeah, and 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 that's I anticipate that the defense is gonna be getting witnesses that will support Diddy. The defense is going to have, you know, people that can prove that it was all consensual. And I think that's going to be what they do. Their main defense is going to be that this was sexual. They're going to pull out receipts showing that Diddy might have paid for them, but they traveled from across the country to come see him, et cetera, et cetera. Um, they're going to implicate, they're going to, the other thing the defense is going to do, which I'm glad we're having this conversation, they're going to attack the credibility of all the witnesses in this case to show that they have maybe financial incentives to come after them. They had professional uh, incentives to come after them. They had revenge incentives to come after them. They're going to paint, they're going to attack every single one of the government's witnesses with some type of nefarious purpose as to why they're cooperating with the government, to include Cassie. Um, and, you know, I'm sure Diddy probably has some receipts and video that shows that some of this stuff was consensual, et cetera. So um, it'll be interesting to see the defense that his uh, team is going to put put uh, put together. Okay, would this be on an agent side or AUSA side? So I'm now starting to believe, as this is shaping up, the main victim clearly seems to be Cassie. They haven't listed her by name, but they have listed actions with someone they call victim one. It clearly, you know, um, describes Cassie directly, if you ask me, from the, the Kid Cudi thing that we've heard from before, from the, um, you know, the jealousy, some of the dates, and obviously the, the infamous video that was... Um, in 2016, where there was an assault caught on camera. L l l let me ask you this question, right? So if she's the main victim of all of this, yep. right? And she's not seen as a a, a perpetrator. Um, it, isn't this almost like a hearsay type of situation, right? Like, you know what I mean? If, if he has some stuff that could say, yo, she kind of was with it, like... Yeah, and also, oh, and also, um, these other cases, right? You know, and by the way, we're watching a, like there's a video of like a, a quote unquote Diddy party where we see Fabulous and we see Trey songs and you know Kevin Hart's like narrating. The these other people who are like ancillary to the situation and all of these um uh, other lawsuits, why not go get them? Does it make the case look weaker if they're not involved? Uh, and I think that's where Diddy's going to come in. I think he's going to come in. Diddy's job on this situation is what he's going to do is he's going to try to show that this was consensual. He's going to show other people that were involved. And he's going to identify other conspirators. And I think that's going to be his defense strategy. Attack the credibility of the witnesses. Identify other individuals. And... Um, present evidence that shows that um, other individuals were also involved with facilitating this. I, th I think that's what his game plan is going to be. And, you know, I've, I've heard people mention Trey Song's name and not to throw him into the fire or anything like that. But um, obviously there wouldn't be no name as an entertainer that's bigger than Diddy. And when people think about there's bigger fish, they're thinking about possibly executives. So of course. People have mentioned a few names like Clive Davis and you know, other people, some of them who unfortunately have even passed away, uh, who may have enabled or put him onto game to some of the this behavior. Do, 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 you, do you, you know, Trey Songs has a bunch of, you know, civil cases, nothing criminal. Yep. Do, do you think maybe they look at Diddy and be like, yo, if you could corroborate or help us get an investigation on this nigga going on, we might give you a little bit. Yeah. No, I think it's possible if he can give them other names of big individuals that would bring the U.S. United States Attorney's Office some positive press. I, I think they can do it. Um, they can give them a proffer, right, and uh, or a 5K letter, a safety valve, whatever you want to call it. They're all basically the same thing, Qu king for a day, queen for a day, you know, and uh, he can provide some information with his lawyer there and not be prosecuted for it. And uh, if he provides substantial assistance that leads to an arrest or, you know, um, advancement of the investigation, they'll definitely give him some time off.